So a, a while back, maybe a couple years ago now, I showed you guys a video on how to bypass needing a Microsoft account to install Windows 10 when they started making that a requirement. Uh, as always, a lot of the comments basically said, Jay, this is only gonna work for a little while. It's gonna stop working. Microsoft always patches these kinds of videos or patches these kinds of bypass slash workarounds because of videos like this. And I vowed that as workarounds continue to become available, I will continue making videos like this because screw Microsoft and them requiring you to have a Microsoft account. So today we're gonna show you how to install Windows 11, which is the latest ISO people would basically be installing from for the most part. Uh, how to bypass the install requiring both a, a CD key or a, a, a install key, a Microsoft account, and how to tell it to F off after your first round of updates where they make you try and install and put on your Microsoft account again. Take your work and gaming experience to the next level with the ViewSonic XG340C 2K Ultra Wide High End Display. The XG340C 2K 34 inch 100 Hz Ultra Wide Monitor features HDMI 2.1, AMD FreeSync Premium Pro, 1000R curved screen, VESA Display HDR400 and one millisecond response time for the ultimate immersive gaming experience. And take control of multiple devices with KVM support while also taking full control of your display via the Elite Display Controller. To see the full list of specs and features, follow the sponsored link in the description below. All right, so a couple of prerequisites with this. Um, like I said, this is Windows 11. I don't know if this workaround method that I'm gonna show works with Windows 10 or not. Um, also too, you know, there's a few things you have to do to prepare for getting this working. I also did a video recently, I don't think it's out yet, which is like an updated 2023 edition of what to do after building your tower, where we used the Height Y60 build that I utilized to show you guys how to get everything up and running, how to get your drivers up to date, how to get your BIOS up to date, all that sort of stuff. The kind of things that a new builder would probably not be too familiar with um, to get you 100% up and ready to go and start playing your games. Embedded in that video is what I'm about to show you here. Um, but I figured a standalone video for this would be important because I want as many people as possible to not have to deal with Microsoft and their, their bullying tactics regarding forcing you to open an account for something that you've already paid for a license for, theoretically. So here's the Windows install page. It looks very similar. Obviously we're off of a, a bootable ISO. This is so, side note, what we tend to do with our ISOs is we don't use the one that just comes with our install kit, case, whatever from Best Buy. We use the same one in all of our builds. We usually will go and download the latest installer ISOs to get us farther ahead in the update process. That way we're not sitting there um, with 5 million hours worth of updates because we're so far behind. The downside about that is when you go and grab a later ISO, that's when you also are grabbing the fixes that work you around on this sort of stuff. So kind of keep that in mind. Anyway, moving forward, we're gonna hit next. We're gonna hit install now. This particular drive already has a Windows ISO or install on it, but we're gonna just be overriding it with a brand new install. Remember I said, um, we're not gonna talk about putting in a key right now. This is part of the workaround. I haven't tried it by putting in a key, but we are gonna go ahead and just do this method. It's worked so far and we're gonna keep going with this. We're gonna click, I don't have a product key. This is where you're gonna tell it what version of Windows, Windows that you're installing. Now the key that I do have is a Windows 11 Home. So that's just the one I'm gonna put in right now. We're gonna hit custom install because we're installing a brand new system here. And these are all the partitions. So side note here, you if you have a brand new system, you're not gonna see these partitions. I'm just gonna quickly delete these partitions because these are part of recovery drives and uh, Windows partitions that it sets up at the time of install. There we go. We just have our single drive right there. So I just basically destroyed our Windows install, which is perfectly fine. So we're gonna click that and we're gonna hit next. And what it's gonna do now is gonna copy all of your Windows files from the disk onto the SSD, because it's a much safer install environment than trying to rely on just the USB disk or USB drive. Not to mention, it would be extremely slow to install off of the USB. So once these files are copied over, it'll do a restart. During that restart, we're gonna pull this drive out, that way it doesn't boot back to it, because depending on your BIOS settings, it could just re, I've seen people complain that like, after it copies its files, I just get the first screen again and it just keeps looping. That's because your system, for whatever reason, continues to boot off of the USB rather than changing itself to the new installer drive, which the UEFI BIOS is supposed to be able to do automatically knowing it's a new Windows install because of the fact that we don't want to take a chance of just looping. We're going to do it ourselves. So as soon as the screen turns black, we're going to pull it out. Now what we're going to get is the uh, Windows installer the next steps. First and foremost, I should have also mentioned, don't plug in your ethernet because ethernet, it knows you're connected to the internet. Wireless, it doesn't necessarily know, but we have to trick the thing. Now it's like connected to a network. You notice there's nowhere here where you can say, I don't have internet. There's nowhere you can do that. 
And that's what's weird because here's the thing, just because it sees wireless networks doesn't mean any of them are mine. So how are you supposed to get past this part right here? And this is the part that I think is just completely bull they, There's no workaround right here. Well, the old workaround used to be shift F10, which would bring up the command prompt. You could run task MGR, which brings up task manager, which you could then hit more details, go to processes, find network connection flow right here, right click and task. Well, that one worked, which got us past the internet step, but it's not gonna get us past the Microsoft step, or did it? So we're now gonna operate on the assumption that that workaround didn't work, which is the case for if you have an installer pass when they patch that. Um, we're still gonna go ahead and sh hit Shift F10, and, but we're gonna type OOBE for out of box experience, backsplash, backsplash, backslash, I can never say that, bypass NRO. This is basically as if you had had a new user basically using the computer. So uh, SIs use this quite often. They'll build a system, they'll use like a, um, an ISO or something, like an image of a drive, get everything installed, get all the software and stuff and everything set up on the desktop, get all the drivers and whatnot going. And then they, by using this command means the first time you boot the system, it's like you're the first person that's ever booted it and you put in all your information. So this allows us to do this without having to put in any of our information. The downside is like I've already said in this video, the first time you do updates or connect to the internet in your next restart, it'll more than likely prompt you for your Microsoft account again. And that's the most important part to show you how to get around that one. And the workaround is actually quite stupid and simple. And I feel like Microsoft almost tried to hide it. NZXT's build is a quick and easy way to get a new gaming computer. Build a gaming PC on your budget using the built-in configurator and see exactly how your favorite games will perform. Want to build your own PC but still have the NZXT peace of mind warranty? Then the new BLD Build It Yourself kit has what you want. Buy it and build it yourself and NZXT has you covered. To get started configuring or building your next gaming PC, visit the build link in the description below. So once you boot back up after you do the out of box experience command, you're gonna see the same screens. The difference is now the I don't have internet button shows up and that was not there the first time. I don't know why that's never, that's not there from the start. Clearly it's baked into the installer, but now you can see, you can click, I don't have internet. Now it will let you continue with limited setup, which is trying to scare you. It's trying to make you think, oh, if you don't sign into Microsoft, you won't get the whole operating system that you paid for. Oh yes, you will. They just won't get the data they're hoping you paid to give them. So we're gonna call this MS ha 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 ha. We're gonna uncheck all the stupid spyware boxes. And I said this in my previous video, I'm waiting for the day when they reverse the language where basically you're, when you toggle off, you're saying, yes, do this, which I think could probably be considered as skeevy and probably be sued for, but I, doesn't stop Microsoft. So there we are, we're at the desktop and so far we haven't put in a Microsoft account. Now you might think you're in the clear, but as soon as you connect to the internet and then you restart your system, it's going to trigger you for it. Okay, so it didn't prompt us on just the restart. So here we go, update time. As you can see, there's a few. This is an old updater. And I'm gonna do the cumulative update. I have a feeling it's the cumulative update that actually triggers it, not the the security update. Unfortunately, for this video, it's not prompting me to install or log into a Microsoft account after updates and stuff. It might do it for you. It's very inconsistent when it's doing it, but at some point it might recognize, hey, you're not logged into Microsoft account, log in. All you need to do, control, shift, escape, more details, processes, and what I noticed when I, see, I was trying to shut it down, just like we would shut down with the out-of-box experience or the task manager with the network connection flow. And what I noticed when I was looking through anything that said like Microsoft account login, et cetera, et cetera, you know, trying to find a process to shut down, I noticed up here under apps, there was three instances of search running. And I was like, is this search window up? And when I right clicked end task on the search, then the prompt went away. So I can't demonstrate that for you on this one. It sucks because it's only happened once so far in like the half a dozen times I've tried to, do, to recreate this situation so I could show you guys on camera. But I can tell you right now, it, that, that's the workaround and then it hasn't popped up again after closing down the application. So it might do it again on a major update, but that's all you would need to do. Right click or control, shift, escape, processes, apps, search, right click and task, and then it will go away. So there you go. There's your workaround uh, on how to just install Windows without having to be installed or logged into a Microsoft account. 
This is probably gonna break again at some point. When it does, you can guarantee we'll make another one on how to keep working around it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.